That is Midlife Adventures Part 2, The Emerald Sword. What on earth? Emily stepped through the whirling cloud and stared at Sally in utter disbelief. This is amazing. How? She gasped, holding both hands to her face in total awe of what had just happened. I stumbled onto something a little weird, Emily, and I know you the one of the few people who I could share this with without judging me in any way. Let's explore the possibilities together, if you want to. I'll take you right back if you prefer not to meddle, though, Sally whispered secretly, hoping she had an ally in this magical discovery, because quite frankly, Sally was a little intimidated by it all and welcomed support from her best friend. Oh, absolutely, Sally, I want to explore this. I feel like an excited kid again. How can we explore, though? This seems like an enclosed cave, Emma retorted excitedly. Emma was a year younger than Sally, but they had always been each other's crutch when something in their lives had knocked their feet out from under them. Both were in their fifties, so both had been through so much. Their lives had almost parallel comparisons, except Emma had a significant other, Tom, for 16 years now, and Sally had chosen a solitary lifestyle. Emma and Tom preferred to live in separate homes so that neither of them had to deal with picking up after each other or when they felt irritated or tired, they simply went on to their own place to recharge. This seemed to be the trick in keeping the relationship alive. Admittedly, this made a lot of sense to Sally as it ensured that both Emma and Tom remained independent. Sally and Emma were at a time of their lives where they avoided taking orders from anyone at all costs and treasured their space, solitude and serenity. Sally was astounded by her unexpected inheritance of her great-uncle Dan's manor, and it came at a time in Sally's life where she was feeling quite frustrated at still having to work in a mundane job that had no scope for promotion and absolutely no incentives, no matter how hard she worked or how many constructive money-saving ideas she had proposed and implemented. She had felt used and unappreciated, and her passion for her work was being stifled by the management, who seemed to thrive on control implementing ridiculous petty rules just because they could. She realized that it was true that job satisfaction is not merely the place you work, but the people you work for, and she had reached a depressing, frustrating stage with her management. So when her inheritance had surfaced, she resigned immediately, with such a huge smile on her face, she thought she would burst with happiness. She had felt like her great uncle Dan had thrown her a lifeline, and she was determined to help others once she had settled into her new life and taken a well-needed break to gather her plans. Look for sigils, Emma. They look like lines drawn in various shapes. Perhaps there's another doorway we can open. Sally took her mini torch from her jacket and shone it on the walls, which instantly sparkled in the light. Hmm, look at this, Emma. There's strange veining in these walls, between the sparkles. And look, there's some sort of pictures telling a story. Look, there's some sort of dragon with what looks like a diamond collar and an old-fashioned buckle with a lock. Emma ran over and grabbed a torch, inspecting the drawings intently. Sally, look! Isn't that your green pin drawn in the picture? Like the one you have in your jacket? It seems to unlock the buckle on the dragon's collar. Oh my! Do you think it's dangerous to... Will the dragon attack us? Will we die? Emma, we're going to die anyway, so what better way to go? I just hope it's quick, Sally mused almost to herself at the thought of this ridiculous scenario. Are we really doing this, Emma? We're here, aren't we? Emma retorted excitedly, even though she was scared stiff. I think you insert your emerald pin into the lock on the collar. Come on, Sally. If we die, at least we died in an adventure. If we live, just think of the possibilities. Let's delve, Sally, into the unknown. Haven't we always wanted to unlock the secrets to life? Sally took off her emerald pin and slowly inserted it into the dragon's collar. Whoosh! A green haze appeared and the pin became an impressive one-meter curved dagger. The handle beautifully crafted with a swirling winged dragon wrapped around it in a shiny silver type of metal. The emerald was on the base of the handle and it seemed to glow ethereally. Sally held the magnificent dagger in her hands and inspected every aspect of it. Emma... What do you reckon this does? You're the master of mysteries. What on earth is this for? Perhaps there's some sort of slot to insert it in, Emma mused. 
deep in thought whilst brushing her hand softly across the shimmering wall trying to feel for one. Here's something, Sally. Quick, bring it here. Sally carefully slid the end of the dagger into the slot and instantly a vision played out in front of them, making them jump back in shock. It was like some sort of hologram. A tall slender man dressed in jeans and a long trench coat sprang onto some sort of huge creature from behind. He has a sword, Emma shrieked, totally caught up in the scene playing out in front of her. The man plunged the sword into the creature's neck. It was a dragon. Sally couldn't help feeling utter sadness and despair for the dragon. Why couldn't people just let creatures be? Obviously, this man had hunted the dragon and entered its hidden lair. Was he some sort of dragon hunter? Sally hated animal cruelty and was appalled at the vision playing out in front of her. Something caught her eye though. She looked closer. Uncle Dan? That's my late Uncle Dan. What the heck? Suddenly, in an instant, the dragon fell to the ground. A green haze surrounded the dragon and it transformed into a baby dragon, or hatchling as they are actually called. Uncle Dan stood over it, seemingly to finish it off, but suddenly the sword was magically expelled from the hatchling's neck and the dragon transformed again, this time into a human baby. The sword also started swirling with the same green haze and transformed into the green emerald dagger. Sally and Emma stared at each other in shock. Uncle Dan hesitated, then took off his jacket, swaddled the baby, which was a girl, and picked up the dagger. He held the baby in his arm and looked at the dagger, pressed the emerald, and the dagger once again became the emerald pin, which he stuck on his sleeve, and the hologram disappeared. What the actual heck? Emma murmured while staring at Sally. What did we just witness? A dragon that became a baby girl? Your uncle holding her and that damn emerald pin? What is going on? I think we need to search this place some more, Emma. Perhaps he left a diary somewhere. Or maybe we need to recheck the book of sigils I found. Uncle Dan obviously had many secrets which we need to uncover. We need to find out what happened to that baby girl. What? I don't know what to think, do you? A baby? A dragon? A human baby? What? Let's go back to the real world and do some research. Sally drew her portal sigil, smacked it and wished they were back in the study of the manor where they had been prior to the adventure. Immediately Sally grabbed her cell phone and started researching dragons. She found out that dragons have a range of supernatural powers, changing size or form, and most are able to take human shape, fly among the clouds or hide in water. They can form clouds, turn into water, and have the ability to blend in with their surroundings by changing color. This is an effective form of camouflage, although they are also able to glow in dark places. Oh wow! Sally exclaimed as she read this aloud to Emma. She grabbed the book of sigils and paged through it, but found nothing besides the sigils. Frustrated, she decided to light the fire in the study which the butler had prepared. It lit immediately and Sally felt the warm glow and sat in front of it on the mat with the book. She noticed something faint starting to appear on the pages of the book. She stood up, then close to the fire and held it open towards the flames. What are you doing? Emma shouted. That's our only clue. Don't destroy it. Look, Emma, words are appearing from the heat. It must be some sort of secret inscription, Sally replied excitedly. It was some sort of diary entry by Uncle Dan. Not sure what to do with baby dragonette, the diary read. She seems totally normal, but I need someone to look after her. Not sure if she'll stay human, but it's been a week now and nothing's changed. Told the maids that I found her abandoned and they've been looking after her for me. I've arranged for my sister Kate to adopt her and have pulled some strings, so all is about to be finalized soon. Kate is aware of everything and is willing to protect her. Through much research, I've discovered that female dragons can transform to human babies if their lives are threatened. They keep their dragon soul and when they reach the fiery stage of their lives, this is merely the beginning of their adulthood. Baby Dragonette will find her way back when the time comes, so I will continue to leave clues she can find, because this will be the beginning of her actual life and she will need to learn to deal with it. Emma! Sally squeaked. My mom's name was Kate. <laughs>